Hey, what's up everybody? Jason Turley here. In today's video, we'll be going over Nmap, the network mapper. It's a tool to scan a IP address or a host or an entire network range if you want. And it can do a myriad of things. You can see what hosts are alive. You can see what, what ports and services they're running. You can scan for vulnerabilities and so on and so forth. You can evade firewall detection. You can do some pretty crafty things with Nmap, but in today's video, we're just gonna focus on the beginning, the basic stuff, if you've never run Nmap before. Or even if you have, what's the difference between the two most common scans? The SYN scan, also known as the stealth scan, and then the TCP connect scan. What are the true differences? When should you use one over the other? So without further ado, let's take a look at the help menu for Nmap, right? Nmap, tac, tac, help. It prints out all these different syntax, all these options. We see the basics uh, usage of it is just Nmap, and then you provide the scan type, any other options you want, and then the target, whether that's the host name, an IP address, or a network. So you can give the actual website URL, and it, DNS will translate that to the IP address, and yada, yada, yada. You can give it a CIDR notation. See Here we see slash 24. You can give it a single IP address, or you can give it a range of IP addresses. Similar to that ping sweep that we did in the previous video, you can do from dot one all the way to dot two five four. So just cover every host in that subnet. There's different host discovery techniques, but we're not going to worry about most of these today. We're going to get into that in a different video. Today we're just going to focus on these first two options under scan techniques, the big S and the big T. Right. The way this is laid out is kind of weird. Each one of these separated separated by the slashes are different scan types. So we see there's the SYN scan, we see there's a the connect scan, ACK window, and maintenance scans. There's also UDP and so on and so forth. You can provide a port range if you only wanted to scan a specific port. By default, Nmap will only scan some of the top common ports. So things like SSH on port 22, HTTP on 80, or HTTPS on 443, RDP on 3389, and so on and so forth. They give us some examples down here at the bottom. Nmac with the V for verbose, print more information to the screen for me. So we're gonna use this first one. We're not gonna do the TAC A just yet. So before we get started, let's go over the difference between the TCP scan and the stealth scan. If you just Google Nmap TCP scan, the first result that pops up should be from nmap.org, the official source. So click on that and there's a good example, there's a good diagram that we're gonna break down rather quickly. So the TCP connect scan is a default port scan when send scan is not an option, it won't be an option unless we are the root user. Because if we're not root, then we don't have the raw uh, packet privileges or if we don't run it with sudo. So the TCP connect scan is gonna do the full three-way handshake that you can see here in this diagram. This hacker guy running Nmap on his VM or his machine is going after this computer called ScanMe. So it sends the SYN request, the SYN packet, S-Y-N, the computer responds with a SYNAC, and then finally the hacker's machine replies with an ACK. If you're not sure what that means, the TCP three-way handshake, all it means, so if you and I were to have a conversation, it's basically me asking you permission. So I'm like, hey, can I tell you something? That's the SYN packet. You respond, sure, yeah, you can tell me something. And that's, that, that's your SYN acknowledgement. You're acknowledging that I asked you, hey, can I start a conversation with you? And I acknowledge that you acknowledged me. Very roundabout, very strange, right? You wouldn't really do this having a conversation with someone, but computers do this all the time. And that's how they kind of establish that trust, that connection, and then from then on, you can see like data is being sent back and forth. The scan me host sends the SSH banner string and the target computer, typically it would just continue on and then it would send a uh, finish packet. I think it says that down here. It says TCP connections usually end with another handshake involving the fin flag. We're done, it's over, thank you, have a good day. But instead we send a restart. So that's normal network traffic, that's normal network communications. When I had to access this website, a TCP uh, connection likely happened, right? Through a handshake likely happened. So what's the problem if we do this with our Nmap scans? Well, A, it's more network traffic, right? Because if we just do a SYN scan, all we do is send the first SYN packet, we get the SYN acknowledgement back, 
if the port was open and then we skip this we skip the acknowledgement and then we just send a restart so with the connect scan a we're sending more traffic we're sending more packets if it's just a single host okay maybe it doesn't make a big difference but if we're scanning entire network and a lot of ports that's going to add up it's going to be a lot slower and since we're actually connecting to that service just like i connected to this website that's likely going to log if we're just doing a basic pen test maybe we don't care maybe we want it to log because we want to test the security posture but if we're doing like a red team engagement we maybe want to be as stealthy as possible so we would do the sin scan the stealth scan where all we do is say hey are you open you either respond yes or no essentially and then we bounce i'll leave a link to this page in the description below i'd recommend giving it a quick read a quick browse through if my explanation wasn't satisfactory this has some really good uh, knowledge in here right so the sin scan is preferable it's not perfect you're not going to go completely undetected ever, right? Uh, here it says, an administrator who sees a bunch of connection attempts in her logs from a single system, they'll know something has happened. They'll know someone is scanning me. This will look fishy. If we look at that Nmap help one more time, we see this URL, this host called scanme.nmap.org. What is that? Let's navigate to that. Scanme.nmap.org. We pull this up. You see the title here, it says, go ahead and scan me. Hello, and welcome to scanmenmap.org, a service provided by the Nmap Security Scan Project. We set up this machine to help folks learn about Nmap and to test and make sure that Nmap install. So long story short, this is a publicly available website, a resource that we can scan. It says, don't go hog wild, don't go crazy. Only a few scans per day, please. Don't do more than a hundred times a day. Don't crash the site, don't DDoS it. But just for use cases and examples like this, it's perfectly fine to use Nmap against it. Now, I'm not just going to do an Nmap scan. Um, I'm also going to pull up Wireshark. Let me open it a new pane. Wireshark. That'll pop it up in a new window. Let me close out of this and click this little icon right here to start the packet capture. And let's apply a filter. Let's, um, let's filter for just TCP traffic. And let's do nmap at scanme.nmap.org. We hit enter. And we see all these packets get generated, right? If I scroll up, it's going to keep going. Um, if you can look quickly, let me see. Let me make this better. All right, the port scan finished. We see port 22, 80, 9929, and 31 through 37 are all open. And you can see the different services there. Now let me make, can I make this a little bit bigger, a little bit easier to read? If I scroll up to the top of this packet capture, we see my IP, the one ending in 137. And then we see this is the target IP, 45, 33, 32, 156. That's the scanme.emma.org. And we can see that right here. The first packet I send right here is SIN. It tries port 80 and 443. And then it gets a response back on port 80 with the SIN ACK. The acknowledgement and then we get our um, and then we send our final act so that's the connection right this probably logged in their uh, server logs and the web server logs and then below this we see the restart that we send close the connection and that's exactly what we saw in that diagram from earlier and then down here you're gonna see our RIP on the left the source just doing the port scan right it picks a random high port and it tries to scan, uh, sends a SIN flag, a SIN packet to all these different ports. We see 111, 443, so on and so forth. And we're not getting anything back because those ports are not open. But if we go down to something like, uh, if we find port 22 or port 80, right here, port 80, we see the destination, the scanme.mapp.org sent us a SIN acknowledgement saying, hey, that port is open after all so cool that's the tcp connect scan very basic very simple let's clear this out and let's start the capture again continue without saving that's fine this time instead of doing the regular nmap scan let's do the sin scan 
and we get permission denied, you need root privileges, which is exactly what we saw in that uh, documentation. So let me rerun this with sudo, sudo bang bang, it's a nice little shortcut, hit enter, it asks me for my password, type that in, and it's doing its scan. It's gonna return likely the same exact results as we saw before, the same, what, four or five ports that were open, one, two, three, four, yeah. So we should see the same exact result, and we don't, interesting. I'm curious as why that is. However, if we look at the pack, the top of our packet capture, it's a little bit different. We see the sin flag that we send. Again, they respond with an acknowledgement. And then immediately we send a restart, close the connection, end it. We're not completing that handshake. Maybe this didn't log, maybe it did. I'm not sure, I don't have access to their web server logs. But for one reason or another, we did not get these two ports back, NPing, Echo, and Elite. That, that's very uh, peculiar. But yeah, nothing special in the output here. It's the same exact as before. We're sending SYN packets. We're kind of just poking, we're probing. Hey, are you open? Are you there? Are you there? We're ringing the doorbell. And if we don't get a response back, it likely means that port is either closed or it's behind a firewall, meaning it's blocked, it's filtered. So just to show one other example, quit this, restart. Yeah, that's fine. So if I'm the root user, I'm just gonna do sudo su, change to root. Now if I run nmap, I'm just gonna pick one port. You don't have to do this, but I'm just gonna pick a single port. Let me scan that elite port, scan me .nmap.org. Now I hit enter. By default, since I'm the root user, it'll automatically only scan, um, it, it'll by default only use the TCP sin scan, not the full connect. We can see that in our packet capture. So you don't need to specify the TAC ST when you are root. And you don't need to specify TAC ST um, when you're not the root user, right? So you don't need to specify this. It's going to do it by default. So that's really all I had for this video. That's all I wanted to showcase. Nmap is a super, super powerful tool. Uh, later on, we'll get into like scanning ports. We'll get into scanning... Uh, services, get more version information, more detailed verbose information, and we'll go over script scanning, which will automatically try to find low-hanging fruit, low vulnerabilities that we can exploit, misconfigurations, things of that nature, firewall bypass and detection. It's a really, really powerful tool. If you're ever curious uh, where the ports it's getting, like where is it pulling this information from, you can look at Etsy services. This is a big file. So I'm gonna use less, put it in a little pager. And here we see a mapping between the ports and the services. So before we saw 22 was SSH. This is essentially how Nmap, I don't wanna say decodes, but this is how it knows and figures out what service um, aligns to what port, right? So scroll through, you can look, maybe you learn something new. Maybe you're like, oh, I didn't know NTP was on one, two, three. I did, but. So that's really it. That's all I have for this video. Short and sweet. Nmap, really cool. I'm super excited to showcase more examples and videos. Whenever you use it and you're getting started, I recommend using a packet capture like Wireshark. And this works on Windows as well. I'm showcasing it on Kali Linux just because I think that's smoother. But yeah, Nmap exists and Wireshark both exist on Windows and Mac as well. So. That's it. There you have it. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, take it easy and see you guys in the next video.